thanks for being here today. Thanks for joining us for this phone call, webinar, whatever you want to call it, um, for the role of real estate professionals in a business transition. We'll be starting in a few minutes. Uh, please stay muted during the presentation, but there will be time at the end and throughout for questions. Um, you can also at any time type questions into the chat during the presentation. Thank you so much again, you know, good morning. Um, this event is being recorded, it will be available on U Anka's YouTube channel following the session and we can send it out to you as well. Um, and we'll share the recording and the slides with all the registered participants. So do feel free to share those with other folks too. Um, if you'd like to update your name as it appears on Zoom or add your pronouns, you can click on the participant button at the bottom of your screen, select rename from the drop down options. And then if you wanna introduce yourself in the chat, please feel free to do so. We also have quite a few uh, liaison participants from the Center for Business and Transition here today. Um, so those of you who are liaisons for the program across our region, uh, please do you know, add your name and your information into the chat, identifying yourself as a liaison for the program. But anyone is welcome to introduce themselves in there. Uh, welcome and thanks for thanks for showing up this morning. My name is Danny Delaney. I'm the Entrepreneurial Economy Program Director um, at ANCA, and I have the honor of having helped to sort of coordinate the Center for Businesses and Transition Program for the last five years. Um, and it's been a great pilot program for our region um, and an exciting way that we're mo moving the needle forward on keeping and retaining our small businesses. Um, so. If anybody has questions, if you just joined in, please feel free to type them in the chat at any time. Please introduce yourself in the chat. If you're a liaison or partner for the program, you know, make sure to say that as well. Um, so welcome and thank you. All right, so I'm gonna just jump into it here today. We're gonna get started talking about the ANCA, the Center for Businesses in Transition, why we're here um, and some of the content. So next slide, Mahila, please. Great. Uh, so ANCA um, is the Adirondack North Country Association. Uh, we serve the 14 northernmost counties in New York State, and we're trying to build a new economy that works for all. And that means keeping more money in our communities, circulating around our local villages and towns and municipalities versus leaving our region. We're focused on creating and sustaining wealth and value in our local communities through a variety of different program areas. And on the next slide, we're going to show you kind of what some of those program areas are. Let me go to that one. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we work in small businesses. Uh, so this is a part of that program, the Center for Businesses in Transition. We also help artisans who are trying to get to wholesale. We'll help small business owners who are working on trying to figure out how to, their website works, that sort of thing. Um, but we do that with our partners from throughout the region in a variety of different ways. Um, you'll meet some of those partners today. We work in food <laughs> systems. So we're not necessarily the folks who are going out and telling you how to milk your cow, right? <laughs> we're really looking at the food system as a whole um, and trying to figure out, you know, how do our local farmers be, become better businesses and how do they work together to make sure that they can adequately get their products and services to market in a way that is both logistically efficient and also, you know, monetarily keeps the businesses afloat and prospering. We work in clean energy so we can help small businesses or residents. We can help uh, your municipality figure out if LED streetlights are right for them. Um, if having a air source heat pump in their commercial building is a good choice. And what are the different perks and benefits that are available through New York State and other programs uh, to be able to capitalize on clean energy programs? So we have a whole team of folks that help guide people through those um, sometimes complicated conversations and paperwork and grant applications and all of that sort of thing. Uh, we focus on equity and inclusion through our work with the Adirondack Diversity Initiative. Uh, so we're the home of that particular program to make all of our communities and counties and uh, businesses more welcoming to visitors and residents and employees. Um, and we also have a, an additional program called the Center for Pandemic Response that kind of ties all these other programs in together um, and focuses on, on how those things affect small business ownership uh, as we move through you know, our post, hopefully post-pandemic world. 
And on the next slide, uh, you'll see we have the counties that we serve. Uh, so we serve the 14 northernmost counties in New York, um, and these are all of the regions. If somebody doesn't, if calls us from outside those counties and there's a program they're interested, we will absolutely talk to them. Uh, but it's a very large service area um, and we're excited. To, and as you can imagine, we can't do this work across this large region, which is larger than the state of Massachusetts alone. And that's why so much of the work that we do is built on partnership with organizations like, on the next slide, uh, we have, all of these folks that are part of the Center for Businesses in Transition. The Center for Businesses in Transition isn't one kind of physical location that folks can come into an office for. I mean, you can come to the ANC office, but um, all of these folks are liaisons and kind of a hub and spoke model throughout the region. They're focused on ensuring that our businesses stay open, that the jobs that are in our communities are still available, um, and that our local flower shop is still there when you need to buy flowers or the local laundromat or whatever that looks like. What are these services and businesses that really serve as the heart of commu the community? All of these different organizations are focused on doing a part of this work to focus in on how to retain businesses. How do we do this collectively? How do we do it together? And how do we do it in a partnership model? that will ensure that we can succeed in keeping businesses as we move forward into the, um, into the future. So the, this program has been funded by a number of different sort of grant funding partners um, and opportunities for uh, grant federal, state, and some local grants as well, um, and private grants that have helped to, to sort of keep this program going for the last five years. It's a pilot project. There's not a lot of other things like it. Um, less than 20% of businesses who choose, who are plan small business owners, right? Like nationally, we have, um, you know, are, are looking to retire. Tons of baby boomers, as you might imagine. Um, it's a national issue, the transition to um, trying to find succession. And less than 20% of business owners across the, the nation who are looking to retire are able to transition in their, the sale of their business to somebody else. So it's not just an issue we're facing here in the North Country, um, it's an issue we're facing nationally and um, collectively are really trying to kind of focus in on how we can best help serve the small businesses in our community. I'm gonna show a quick little video here on this next slide. Um, it's focused on the presentation that we had to, that we gave to one of our original funders, the Northern Border Regional Commission, kind of outlining um, how the program got started and kind of where we're at in the pipeline. So this is about a year old, so it is a little bit older, but not too out of date. Um, but I think as you're, you know, out in the field thinking about business transitions and real estate transitions, like just understanding kind of where this project started and how we want to move forward might be helpful as we continue the conversation. So, uh, Mahila, I'll let you hit it. Inca, the Adirondack North Country Association, is proud to have piloted the Center for Businesses in Transition with the financial support of the Northern Border Regional Commission. Liaisons and lead partners throughout the North Country have compiled resources, done outreach, made workshops and guidebooks and practice valuation to support business owners looking to transition. The Center for Businesses in Transition has seen 215 business owners reach out for support in developing a succession plan and 120 entrepreneurs looking to take over a business. Hear from one now. The Belvedere has been a major part of the Saranac Lake area for almost 90 years. It opened in 1933 and had been owned and operated by the same family since that time. When that family was ready to move on, the chamber didn't want to see the bell close, and the community didn't want to lose such a valuable business. ANCA, the Adirondack North Country Association, works with small business owners and folks who want to be small business owners to take over businesses through the Center for Businesses in Transition. We're a dynamic, 
regional partnership of organizations and leaders focused on keeping our small businesses open here in the North Country. When I had the opportunity to move back here full time in 2020 and started really looking for businesses, I looked at a number of properties. This one is so multifaceted. It just has an incredible amount of potential. When this opportunity presented itself, I really jumped on it because I felt like it was an active part of the community in a way that other investments just aren't. An opportunity like this goes around once in a lifetime and with the background experience I have over the years with different aspects of the restaurant business. I think it made a lot of sense to apply that to a place that is so historic. With that experience, it will allow me to honor the history and respect it and also bring on some modern stuff as well. Without the support of ANCA and the Center for Businesses in, in Transition and the Chamber, I would not have been able to navigate through this. Um, it is challenging um, and they were incredibly helpful. Working through this as we have for the last two years has um, been tough, but part of the advantage of that is we came together pretty closely. Um, and now we're not just business partners, but partners in our personal life as well. Thank you to Bing Bang Boom Productions for that excerpt from their highlight of the Belvedere transition story, one of 37 transition businesses through the program's efforts, including Main Street Exchange, Ward Lumber, Adirondack Soy Candles, Tug Hill Vineyards, Happy Camping RV, Martin's Handmade Pretzels, Adirondack Awards and Promotions, Circle Court Motel, Little Town Lanes, Pointer Rouge Lodge, Silver Bay General Store, and many more who have reached out for resources. We could have never expected this many transitions to happen in such a short amount of time. Thanks for playing that, Mahela. That just gives you a quick overview of the program um, and kind of where we're coming at with this. And we're not, um, as you know, you're going to hear over and over again, we're not real estate <laughs> uh, professionals. In fact, we spend 99% of our time trying to convince people they need a real estate prof professional and an accountant and a lawyer. Um, but we're really trying to help some of those business owners who may not understand like the full process of how do I get started and what do I need and where does that process start and end to be as prepared as possible and to really get start doing their taxes a little differently three to five years in advance of when they actually want to sell um, and to focus on getting ready to make this big change in their life. Um, on the next slide, uh, the video you just watched was a little bit older, uh, as I had mentioned, uh, but this is our most updated numbers. You know, we supported 252 businesses in transition across our region. And, you know, we're very transparent about the fact that some of those are very low touch. And what I mean by low touch is that, you know, they got some resources, they watched a webinar, but we didn't have a very, you know, in-depth conversations with them. Some of them are just exploring their available options. Some are pursuing a cooperative transition. Um, so if you, you can look on your screen and kind of see where we're at there. Uh, but we've had about 20 businesses that we worked with really, really closely to ensure the transition has uh, you know, gone through and about 43 have transitions that are a little more hands off. Um, but you know, we only have about 40 businesses at any given time that are really publicly for sale, right? Um, most of the time when folks are reaching out to us, they're just asking, you know, where do I start? How do I even start thinking about this? How do I talk to my employee? Um, most of the folks kind of in that pipeline are really just thinking about how to get started and looking for educational information. Um, so I'm gonna ask uh, you, Mahela, to kind of move forward a couple of slides because uh, we kind of talked about, you know, some of those existing businesses. Um, and yeah, perfect. Uh, so, and you can pull up all the different things on this if you just keep, yeah, there we go. So one a way we do this is we focus in a lot on how, on different events and programs like this one, but focus on, you know, sellers and buyers as well. Uh, we've had a large conference twice now. It'll happen again in 2025. Um, and this is a way that we can showcase businesses uh, that are for sale and bring aspiring entrepreneurs into the region or even just, you know, have aspiring entrepreneurs in our region looking at businesses in their backyard. Um, most of the business owners who are showcased at this conference 
have a real estate professional <laughs> that they are working with, that they have a listing on. Um, and this is just an added opportunity for them to be able to showcase their business. We have a matchmaking event coming up that I'll talk about, uh, but just a heads up, you know, from our last big conference, uh, which we have every other year, you know, we had 187 registrants and a couple of really great connections made. Um, the focus is on curriculum and learning about the transition process and a little bit on the matchmaking side. So I'm trying to go over all of this information pretty quickly just about the program so we can get into our speakers um, and chat about, you know, kind of what, what their experience has been um, trying to fit in what their role as a real estate professional has been uh, with the program itself. One of the other tools and opportunities that we kind of bring to the table, which is showcased on the next slide, is if you have any prospective buyers um, who are looking at our region or looking at a commercial property, and then maybe they live outside of the region, we have funding and opportunities to bring them to the area. It could be students, it could be just a family who's looking to take over a business. And if they need to stay overnight, you know, we can help subsidize the cost of their overnight stay. Uh, so if you're working with a potential buyer and um, you know, visiting a couple times a year could close the deal is, is, is a little prohibitive to closing it, please let us know. We would love to bring them here um, and help you to ensure that they can have a lovely stay and learn about their financing resources and uh, we can help pay for them to stay overnight. Um, so I'm gonna just skip ahead a little bit uh, to the matchmaking event slide. Michaela, do you mind just jumping to slide number 14? Upcoming, we also have a uh, matchmaking event. So if you have any sellers, somebody who's selling their commercial property and a business that is in operation, and this is really important. We do not work, if somebody has closed their business, like we will not, you know, you, you got that covered. <laughs> We're really helping folks who are looking to transition their business that is active, um, whether it's to a family member or somebody outside as a co-op, an employee, whatever that looks like. But it, it, it cannot be just an empty commercial building. We're really focused on transitioning the whole business. Um, so we have an upgiving matchmaking event. If you have any clients who might be interested in meeting some potential buyers who don't have somebody in mind, um, we'll have an informal kind of fun matchmaking event coming right up. Um, so I'm going to kind of stop there. That's kind of just a big general overview of the program. There's lots of details and nuances, but I want to kind of just jump into, you know, what this looks for, looks like for the people that are working with us and like what this looks like in practice and how real estate agents, um, realtors, real, real estate professionals um, can think about business transitions in the North Country and pulling the pieces of these kind of deals together. So Mihaela, if you could stop the slides, that would be awesome. And I'm just gonna introduce Christy Wilt. Uh, she is the director of at Hamilton County Economic Development and Tourism. She's been a center for businesses in transition partner since the inception of the program uh, about five years ago and has just been an amazing partner. Um, she also is uh, a a, a real estate professional herself. So I asked her, you know, can, can you come and help, you know, kind of talk a little bit about both things, you, you know, your role as, in the CBIT transition uh, program and also the role of, you know, your, your, you as a real estate professional. Um, so I have some questions for her. Uh, Mihaela, do you mind just pinning Christy to the screen so everybody can, can see her? Christy, will you, you both are pinned. Oh, okay. I don't know why I can't see it, but that's good. I'm glad other people can. That's good. <laughs> um, great. Um, so Christy, you've been part of the Center for Businesses and Transition Program since its inception. How do you see your role as a real estate professional and as a CBIT liaison? How are they complementary? What does that look like for you? Well, uh, you know, I've been selling real estate since 2006, and, and I really feel that the more tools that you have in your toolbox, the better that you can you can service your clients, because that's your goal is to service them and in the very best way and and, and help those sales go through. Um, I also see, you know, myself as an advocate for real estate agents. You know, I want to tell them about all those tools and about the CBIT program and helping them publish their sales. You know, we regularly... Um, monitor the list of publicly advertised properties for sale throughout the North Country. And I know in Hamilton County, and because I'm a real estate agent, um, I provide links directly to the listing agent, or if not the agent, directly to their uh, real estate page. 
Um, these lists are on my county website. They're on my Adirondack Good Life website. Um, I share the businesses from time to time under uh, the Industrial Development Agency uh, Facebook page, the Good Life Facebook page. So we're actually helping to push those listings out into the market even further, um, you know, and and referring the appropriate brokerage. Uh, some people don't know that when they go on to an MLS, they might not be getting um, the best information from the appropriate brokerage. It might just be a referral link to someone who's never stepped foot inside the building. So I know that uh, that is one way that I'm helping. And now there's a lot of tools that we can discuss next that we can offer. That's awesome. So an aspiring or a, or a business owner comes to you or an aspiring entrepreneur looking over to take over a business. Like what resources do you use as a as a real estate professional and what resources do you use through the Center for Business and Transition? What do, what do you give them? What are some of the tools and, and things you have at your disposal to help them through that process? So we, we all have our website and we all have our marketing and we all do our, you know, selling sheets and we try to gather as much information as we can as possible. But I think the CBIT program is extremely helpful for region, for real estate agents, buyers and sellers. Um, you know, I've reached out to numerous people over the last five years, you know, with some of the program benefits. Uh, some instances are if you have a buyer who's short on funds, um, what if the bank requires a business plan and they don't have one for a buyer? What if uh, they need equipment or working capital um, after the business has been purchased or sold? Um, you know, I deal with these obstacles all the time and I'm sure others in the, in the field do too. Um, we work with the small business association, so they have free help writing business plans, calculating startup costs, getting tax ID numbers, funding businesses. Uh, there's courses to help buyers purchase a business, courses that are start to finish, tell them who should be involved. Maybe they don't know who should be involved in their sale. Um, maybe at this point they decide not to buy uh, that they just can't do it, and that's okay too. It's a very good place to send first time buyers. As a real estate agent, we're always worried about the funding, but we want them to be successful going into the business with their eyes wide open, you know, CBIT and real estate agents. Um, the industrial development agencies, there are some of those uh, that are CBIT liaisons like myself. Um, we have access to finan financing opportunities both in house with our own loan and grant programs and with partners like the North Country Alliance, the Lake Champlain Lake George Regional Planning Board. Um, you know, they service Warren, Washington, Franklin, Clinton, Hamilton, and Essex County. And then, you know, the IDAs also partner with the uh, Small Business Association and uh, the AEDC, which is the Adirondack Economic Development Council. You need working capital, gap financing, equipment. IDAs are very valuable partners. They work side by side with other organizations I've mem mentioned. And I mentioned the AEDC. Uh, they have no startup cost business training, one-on-one -on -one business counseling, technical assistance. They also assist in lending. All these partners are part of the CBIT program. They also work together. Many times I've seen a few of them, you know, take second or third co-proportional mortgages on properties, you know, just to get the, the sale through. They can assist both on the selling side and the buying side of a transaction transaction, and most are free services. Uh, they cover 14 counties in the North Country, most of them do. And if you reach out to any one of them, they will be happy to lead you in the right direction. If it's not in their wheelhouse, they will send you to the right place and they all want to help. It's, it's kind of part of, in their genes, uh, these folks. Um, CBIT can also help with business valuations. Sometimes you'll get a client who's convinced their property's worth a whole lot more than you think or have calculated that it is, and they need a certain amount to retire, and you know the market says it just won't sell for that price. Um, it's good to be able to have a non-biased resource partner who does business valuations, not only on the real property, but also on the business end contents. Um, this can take the pressure and awkwardness off a real estate agent and you know keep your relationships a smooth and happy one while with your client by using that third party. So that's okay. benefits. 
That's great. Thanks for chatting a little bit about that. And that's so real, you know, having a business owner who, you know, thinks they're that, the, you know, if a, a real, real estate agent comes in and really, you know, gives them appraisal for the property that, uh, about the business, they think the business is worth so much more like having somebody else to really come in and think through that with them um, can be really helpful. Um, and I've heard that from a few folks where um, it helped them kind of right size the, the amount of money um, that they were looking to get. Um, and I, I assume that that's something that you've kind of, you know, they, that so some of these relationships or some of the work uh, as both a real estate professional and as a CBIT liaison can get kind of complicated, right? You're dealing with people's money and livelihoods. And like you said, a lot of folks are planning on selling their business uh, for, for retirement income. How do you kind of navigate some of those complicated relationships or complicated conversations, both as a real estate professional and as a liaison? Like, how do you, how do you go about it? What does that look like in your daily life? Well, you know, <laughs> sometimes, you know, real estate transactions can be touchy situations. There are family members that are involved in, and there are, you know, retirement thoughts that are involved and they put their heart and soul into these business. So you, you just, Mostly as a real estate agent, you have to be kind and sensitive to those, those kind of, um, those kind of feelings and those kind of situations. Um, see, as far as where it gets sticky, I guess real estate agents are um, secretive and protective, you know, about their buyers and sellers. It's a tough market. There's not a lot of listings out there. Um, buyers are educated now on what they want. They're doing their homework and their research now because we all have, you know, the internet. Um, these these folks are the real estate agents' bread and butter. So most of the salespeople are not willing to share information because they might not want to lose a client or customer. Um, I keep myself clear of any transactions, especially in Hamilton County, where I feel someone might be uncomfortable with my present or concerned that I be might be infringing on their buyer or seller. Like I know a lot of the real estate agents down in my area in Fulton County, you know, some in a lower Herkimer County. So, you know, any of those deals, I have a second liaison in my office. We can put her on it if she needs assistance or questions. Sorry, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing all that, Christy. Um, is there anything else you kind of want to share with folks about, excuse me, your your role in business transitions, your role as a real estate professional? Like, what are you what are you glad you know now that that as the help, having helped a number of businesses transition or look at their transition plans? Like, what are some nuggets of wisdom? It could be anything that you'd want to share. Yeah, I think that that we shouldn't be afraid in this position to share, you know, our our clients, our listings, our feelings. You know, the Center for Businesses in Transition also has this list of folks that are thinking about retiring, and we have this list of entrepreneurs. So, you know, being a partner and working with your local liaisons, you know, who knew that, that these lists were out there and this help was out there, and they might be able to help you find a match for for your um, client or for someone who is selling. I mean, there, I, who know, nobody knows that it's, that's why we're doing this so that we can get the program out there. Um, you know, if they can help us get a sale quicker, uh, good for us, good for our clients, uh, good for everybody. Yeah. Great. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and I've heard quite a few folks, you know, have the the a real estate professional is representing a particular business client um, and they have somebody who's already interested and that aspiring entrepreneur is having a hard time getting financing or just getting over the finish line in some way um, and you and other liaisons in the in the partnership have been so instrumental and in really helping in that situation too you know beyond you know helping with findings of prospective buyers, like when that aspiring entrepreneur is really stuck. Um, and you had mentioned this about the sort of these different agencies who can come in and do um, uh, take second and third and different positions on the purchase price. Um, you know, that's been a place in which I think the sort of role of the real estate professionals and the partnership has really shined. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to kind of uh, using that as kind of a jumping off point. Um, we're going to show you a quick video about the Circle Court Motel in Ticonderoga um, and then introduce Matt and Kelly. Uh, Matt is the Ticonderoga Chamber of Commerce president there and Kelly Tears from Brannock Properties, who's the real estate agent in that transaction or the firm was. 
um, and have them just kind of talk a little bit about that, how they've helped different aspiring entrepreneurs, how they've helped sellers, um, their different roles, and kind of what that partnership looks like. So we'll kick off that video, Mihaela, if you don't mind, and then uh, hand it right over to Matt. In the Chamber's honor to work with the Greer family here at the Circle Court Motel as previous owners. Now we are working with the Valardo family as they take the Circle Court to new heights. Welcome to the Ticonderoga area. This is the Circle Court Motel. And this is their transition story. So people have asked why we have uh, interested in buying the place and the reason is we're looking for an investment for future retirement and uh, something to hand down to our kids in the future and we came upon the circle court knowing the reputation it had and the success the Greers had with running the motel. Uh, we began the transition process. Uh, Matt Courtright from the Chamber of Commerce um, directed us to the SBDC and we began working with Tony who helped prepare who helped us uh, prepare a business plan and financials and then we all worked collectively together uh, with the chamber and the SBDC to um, help get ready to submit everything to the bank although in the end we didn't end up going with um, the bank financing um, this did prep us to get ready for um, owner financing. The hardest part of taking over the business was at the very beginning um, having to jump through all the hoops uh, with New York State. Um, there's a lot of paperwork that needs to be submitted and um, it was also difficult because of how things, how slow things were moving with COVID. Um, a lot of things were delayed and that was the most difficult part of the transition process. With these bumps along the way, we were very lucky to have the help of the SBDC, the Chamber of Commerce, and um, our local representatives and state representatives um, to really help us through those bumps along the way. What we're looking forward to the most our first year of business is meeting new people, and, you know, people enjoying staying with us and like renovations, we already started some renovations and just keeping the business going as it was in the past and keeping people happy and coming to Ticonderoga. We've had so many people that have helped us out along the way. Our friends and family have been amazing. Our employees, um, the chamber, the SPDC, a realtor. Also, local businesses and the town of Ticonderoga have helped us along the way as well. Supporting local businesses, and in particular through the transition process, takes a team. It's the chamber, it's the small business development center, it's the local professionals including real estate agents, accountants, lawyers, and of course the team at Inca and the Center for Businesses and Transition. Hi, I'm Danny Delaney uh, from the Adirondack North Country Association. On behalf of the Center for Businesses in Transition, a regional partnership of organizations and individuals committed to successful North Country business transitions, we want to congratulate the Greers on developing a successful succession plan and the Valardos for being able to see it through and take over this new business for them, their family, and their community. Congratulations and good luck. The Circle Court Motel is located in Ticonderoga, New York. Uh, we have 16 rooms, um, two of which are efficiencies, and we plan on doing a lot of updating over the winter, so hopefully you will come check us out. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mihaela, for sharing that video. Um, great. Awesome. Um, so we'll just kick it over to Matt to talk a little bit about, you know, his experience as a liaison and Kelly uh, at Brennick Properties to talk about her experience as a real estate professional in supporting um, 
the circle court, but just what do you do to sort of support businesses in the North Country who are looking to transition? Matt, take it away. Well, good morning, everyone. As Danny said, I'm Matt Courtright with the Ticonderoga Area Chamber of Commerce, and we are a Center for Businesses and Transition Liaison. Um, I'll talk about the circle court at first, um, and uh, I'll try to talk less, and so we can really hear from Kelly, our local real estate agent, but we initially met with the Greer family uh, and Terry Brannick from Brannick Properties and, of course, uh, Danny from the CBIT program. And we spent a lot of time discussing the information that we would need to get that they would need to gather um, to have and have in place for a potential new buyer. Um, we also discussed that they really were in need of a new website, um, which was a, would be an important tool in that transition, not only to promote um, the business as a whole, but to have that website ready and available for a new owner. So we worked closely with, um, of course, CBIT and the Greer family to develop and help fund a new website for them, which was fantastic. Um, and of course, um, we worked closely with Brandt Properties to use their listing and the quality marketing materials that they had put together um, to really promote this business opportunity um, in conjunction with the CBIT website and, of course, the real estate listing through Brandt Properties. Um, then we began working with the Vlardo family once they showed interest um, in this property to, as they mentioned in the video, um, in coordination with the Small Business Development Center, to really develop their business plan, their financial plan. Um, gather key local demographic information that they need to include um, to really have a, a true sense of what they would be diving into. Um, we also just supported them through a variety of funding discussions and possibilities. And as Alicia mentioned in the video, they did end up um, going with owner finance, which we did um, you know, help them um, answer a lot of questions and guide them behind the scenes. Um, we, of course, assist the Vlardos um, <laughs> through many of the hurdles they mentioned in that video, um, both local hurdles, um, funding hurdles, just general business hurdles, and then, of course, state um, licensing and permit hurdles that they were that they were encountering um, really needed to kind of be cleared up and move forward to, for this transition to be possible. Um, after transitioning, we, of course, held the grand opening and ribbon cutting and business transition celebration with both the Greer family and the Velardo family in coordination with the CBIT program, um, which was just a fantastic event and really a culmination of a lot of hard work by a lot of people. Um, we have a very strong working relationship with them today, which we feel is very important. Um, we want to make sure that we're not only connecting and staying close with our existing businesses, but those new business owners to ensure um, the business remains open and continues to be successful. Um, but as Danny said, and we say this constantly and all the time, we are business advisors. We provide business support and services. We are not real estate professionals. We are not accountants. We are not lawyers. And it is so important um, to work with those professionals, utilize people in those fields, because it really does take a team. It's a, it's a multitude of professionals coming together to support these individual businesses that are looking to transition and really um, the new entrepreneurs. And it, it is really a collective team effort. And um, here in the Ticonderoga area, we just have a fantastic group of people who are regularly working together. So we're very thankful. Danny, does that summarize what you're looking for from me? Oh, that's great. Now I don't even have to ask you any questions. I think you did did the whole okay. thing. <laughs> well, I, I'm honored to introduce Kelly O'Neill Tier, and Kelly is with Granite Properties and was the key real estate agent um, for this business transition. Kelly? Thank you, Matt. Um, I met the Villardos prior to their purchase um, of the Circle Court Motel. They were looking at a different business. Um, what I will say, it was very helpful to me as a representative of the Villardo family to work with the Greers because the Greers had everything in order. They had looked at their financials. They had prepared their documentation. They were totally in the right place and prepared to sell this business. And that was a huge help. That doesn't happen very often, I will say. Um, when working with the Villardos, my one of my most important roles I felt was to explain the process and to keep the lines of communication open with their team. Um, by their team, I mean their accountant, their attorney, their the in different individuals they were looking at for financing options. I think that was the most important aspect. Uh, everyone has to communicate. These transactions take longer than a transaction to sell a home. And everyone needs to be patient and everyone needs to communicate very well. 
Um, I also wanted to make sure that they understood what a non-disclosure agreement was and how confidential we all had to be during this process. In my real estate office, once we have that documentation, it's not left out for anyone to see, it is locked away. We all have to be confidential and professional through the process because the seller, of course, does not want their financial information out there for everyone to look at. You only want serious buyers looking at it. Um, the Villardo family, I think one of the biggest hurdles that we faced was financing. They had the energy, they had, they were, they were just such a wonderful couple to work with, but financing options are often the challenge. And it was so great to have these organizations, um, CBIT, uh, the Essex County IDA, the Thai Alliance, the Chamber of Commerce, everybody working to help them with the financing options. And I think that's the biggest challenge for most, most buyers. Um, and then explaining if you're going to use owner financing, the earnest, the earnest money in the letter of intent and, and explaining that this entire process is going to take much longer. I think this is one of a one field in real estate where you really have to speak uh, with the with the listing agents, and if you have to have open lines of communications with the with the seller. In this case, the buyers wanted to know would the staff stay. You know, there were many questions, and then as they're filling out the various applications, I would go back to the listing agent and the and the sellers to ask them, can you provide this information? We need this documentation. It is a little longer process, but the rewards are are really wonderful. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and, you know, telling us both, both of you telling us a little bit more about your experiences. Um, Kelly, what do you wish, you know, you just mentioned that, that the, these particular business owners were really ready to chat with you, had their stuff in order. Um, what does that mean? Like, what do you wish more business owners looking to sell about their business knew before they contacted you? Well, I think that most um, most sellers are nervous about putting their financial information out there for people to look at. I think that is um, emotionally uh, hard for them to do. And in many cases, especially in the cases of the Greers, these businesses have been in their family for generations. There's a large emotional component to the entire process. And you just have to be very patient, um, very kind, and explain everything in detail but the Greers were, they were ready. Um, the, the new website, as Matt had mentioned, I don't think many sellers would think that they should, they're, they're ready to transition out. I don't think they're thinking about updating their, their websites. And it was very important. It made the vis business very enticing. And also I think they need to have some open communication with their staff that they're going through this process and is their staff willing to work with a new buyer because the new buyer of course, would like to retain as many employees as possible. Absolutely. We have a question from the chat. I want to throw that at you, if that's okay. How long um, from initial contact uh, to the closing of the circle core transition? Um, well, it, it all depends on how well the team is working together. You still have to do your home inspections. If it's, you know, for the building, you still have to do your appraisals if there's financing involved. Um, but there's a lot more involved because you're really transitioning a business, not just a, not just a property. I would say it probably took, I would say at least three months and it may have been just a little bit longer, but there are exceptions to that rule. Um, I'm working on another situation where the buyer is using a 1031 exchange to defer capital gains. So they have 45 days to find a new property and then 180 days to close. So in that case, um, we're really pushing this one along quite quickly. And that's not even trying to find the person to take it over, right? <laughs> it's yeah. all in place. It's all in place. What person they sold a business, they want the deferred capital gains. The, the funds that they receive from that business are held by an intermediary. There's 45 days to find a new location that will qualify and then there's 180 days to close. So in those situations, you've got to move more quickly and the lines of communication between the accountant attorney and financing, the members that are helping with financing, we all have to work pretty quickly. Yeah, and Matt, it seems like there's you know a couple of different 
time periods. And Kim will talk a little, I'm assuming, but Kim is going to, uh, who's going to join us in just a minute, who's our small business service specialist at Anka, will talk a little bit more about the sort of like general timeline. Uh, but Matt, you know, your office comes in and out of supporting the aspiring uh, entrepreneurs or the business owners at different stages in the process. Do you want to talk a little, maybe just fill in us in a little bit more about that? Well, or maybe as, even some of the biggest obstacles that you come in when those things happen. Well, obstacles, sure. Um, I think everyone mentioned it's typically financing. Um, but again, we do have great partners with traditional financial institutions, um, economic development agencies, um, and really are several agencies throughout the region. But, you know, everyone's kind of at a different spot. Um, and I'll go back to what Kelly just kind of brought up again was the fact that the Greer family took the time, worked with us, worked with CBIT and their um, real estate agent to really ensure that they were well prepared um, to make this transition so that when an entrepreneur was ready, um, that obstacle wasn't in the way, which I think is so important for any business transition. But again, it's 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 emotional. It's um, this is their these are their babies. It's like having another child, um, these businesses. And we totally understand that. Um, but the key point of this program is to ensure that those pro those services and those businesses remain in our communities. But everyone comes in, in a different at, at a different point. And that's both from um, the businesses looking to transition and right. the entrepreneurs interested in taking over. And we do take a lot of time evaluating where they are at, um, either in the process, where they're at in, the, in their mind of the process, uh, and really to make sure that they're utilizing a lot of local resources um, to ensure that they have all their information together. And then on the flip side, um, when we're working with the possible new entrepreneurs, kind of a reverse process, but the same, they need to make sure that they have the proper content to have a real true picture of what they are going to be choosing to dive into um, and make not only com a commitment financially, but with their time and talent. Um, so, you know, it really ranges on, you know, where each of each of those businesses or entrepreneurs are at um, and whether we have to take a couple steps back. And But sometimes they're a couple steps ahead and they're well prepared. So um, we're, we're here and willing to assist um, both sides, no matter where they are on the process. So. That's awesome. Um, well, thank you so much, both of you, for sharing that. I'm going to kind of start shifting it over to Kim a little bit uh, to talk a little bit more about the technical assistance side. Like, what is she? She will work with folks hands on um, herself, other piece, people that at the SBDC and the ADC, uh, really kind of helping people through some of the valuation bits and getting to the finish line. We have long format, you know, hours worth of content that you could share with any of your small business owners. Um, but Kim's just going to kind of talk through a little bit about, you know, what she shares with them very quickly. Uh, but we really would be delighted to share those resources with you to share with some of your clients or encourage them to come to some of our programming. Uh, Kim, who is a dynamo of many different things, uh, but works at ANCA as our finance and operations director and also our small business specialist uh, and has been with the program for a number of years. Do you want to take it away? I certainly will. And uh, as Danny said, um, we have this is our overview of the selling process. And we have about eight hours of content um, through this process that we do sellers working groups where we work very closely with sellers to get them the information that they need so that they can sell their business for as much money as makes sense. Um, we've talked a lot about building your team, whether or not you want to sell it anonymously, valuation, the sell sheet. So that's it, the resume for the business, putting the strengths of the business forward, the opportunities that might be available to the business because the owner has been at kind of half throttle for a while, you know, marketing the business, where do you market it? You identify an interested buyer. The buyer is going to vet the business, but the business owner also needs to vet the buyer because unlike a more traditional real estate type transaction where you can get pre-qualified, you can't get pre-qualified to buy a small business, but you can ask about somebody's credit score. You can ask about their uh, personal financial statement and those kind of things. And we talked about the non-disclosure. It's a mutual non-disclosure because you don't want either side to be sharing that information. You do the evaluation, you put the letter of intent together. Kelly talked about the um, earnest money that goes down to show true interest and commitment to the process. 
We talk a lot about financing and the various financing options that are available, and then all the uh, paperwork that's involved. And uh, our quick emphasis today is going to be around valuing the business because um, valuing is kind of a tricky piece. It can be really complicated, but um, it doesn't have to be. There are a number of components that um, need to get valued. And the idea of the valuation is to come up with a, a value that makes sense for both the seller who wants probably as much money as possible from their, the, their efforts, but it has to work for um, the buyer as well. And we'll talk really quickly about that. These are the different components of the business that need to be valued. Goodwill, mm -hmm. that is the value that we put on the business for the fact that it's been around for 20, 30, 40 years. It's stable customer base, the brands that it has, it's profitability, et cetera. Inventory, furniture fixtures and equipment, there may be other things such as a uh, front end e-commerce, there may be contracts, that kind of thing. <clears throat> we roll all of that together to price the business. Business is priced separately from the real estate. In my instance, I owned a business and I owned the real estate. When I, I bought the business, I bought both. When I sold the business, I only sold the the business. I did not sell the real estate. So obviously there had to be a valuation on the real on the business itself. You have to if you own it, you have to assign a value for the rent. Um, there's a, as I said, there's a lot of content here, but um, you need that separate valuation. Um, hopefully folks know, actually we won't because we're in a little bit of a hurry here. We'll kind of move through this. So seller's discretionary earnings, which is the foundation for how we price these small mom and pop kind of, we call them main street type businesses. They're owner operated. They, the, the owners work in the business. It's this idea of these different things, recasting your um, net income, normalizing the earnings, that kind of thing. It's a very, very good indicator for the value of a small business or these lifestyle. We take, um, net income, and we add back the expenses that are being run through the business solely at the owner's discretion. So um, a perfect example is life insurance. A An owner's life insurance or health insurance has zero bearing on the value of the business and its um, success. It is being run through the business at their discretion. Um, we also can add back these one-time expenses um, that that are legal defense and those kind of things, repairs. Um, we use this workbook. We work with owners. We load five years of PLs. We run through each expense line item by line item and say what aspect of this is one time or at your discretion, and that allows us to get um, to a number. And then we apply a multiplier and it's an industry specific multiplier that gets applied to that seller's discretionary earnings. And that's how we come up with the valuation for the goodwill. We work with the SBDC to get the valuation guides. And very often these numbers that we use, whether it's sales or we tend to focus on seller's discretionary earnings because it's, as I said, the best number to use for these small mom and pop type businesses. But in this instance, you can see the multiplier goes to two from two to 3.5. If you go through, you're gonna come up with a low valuation and a high valuation and it's a range. And you need to, as I mentioned, make sure that you come up with a valuation that enables the new owner to generate enough cash flow from the business, be able to pay the debt service because it's a very rare instance that a buyer can buy a business without some sort of debt. They obviously need to be able to pay themselves something for their efforts. And then we want them to be able to invest in the future of the company. And if there's not enough cash flow from the business to be able to do that, the valuation doesn't work. And um, there was talk around, um, 
owner financing. I did not know when I bought my business that 80% of businesses are sold with some component of owner financing. And very often it's that owner financing that there's flexibility on that can make the cash flow work. But uh, again, more on that. It is a bit of a process. Um, it's important for the seller to understand it and be able to defend it. Definitely use your um, use, the, use the resources around you, whether it's CBIT, your accountant, the real estate agent, that kind of thing. And then we always, because this process becomes very emotional, we encourage sellers to really come up with their walkaway number and um, and know what it is and uh, stick to it. So that, in a nutshell, is um, a very very quick overview of eight hours of content. And uh, as I said, we do our sellers working groups and uh, yeah, it's good. Great. Do, Back does to you, anybody... <laughs> awesome, perfect. Thank you so much, Kim. Do other folks have any questions in the chat? I mean, you're doing appraisals of real estate all the time. You're dealing with sellers of houses and maybe businesses all the time. Um, what questions do you have? while you think of some questions, um, I'll just remind you all, we do have an upcoming matchmaking event that'll be happening on March 1st. So if you have any sellers who are publicly showcasing their business, um, then, and they wanna come meet some potential buyers who are local or trying to move to the area, uh, we'll, we'll put the link to that in the chat. Um, and we'll also send out a follow-up email with the full, Lots of content Kim was talking about if you are interested in taking a deep dive into kind of the valuation of businesses. Um, so we'll do the link, the link to this recording, past recordings that might be helpful as you're working with your clients um, for a business transition. Hi there, this is okay. Melissa O'Reilly. Sorry, I'm not showing my <laughs> face this morning. <laughs> um, I'm very interested in helping. Thank you, Donna, for inviting me. And thank you all of, all of you for this great information. Um, so what should we do if we want to participate as a real estate agent and, and help help out with? Do we just yeah, join? Awesome. awesome. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Um, you can start referring your clients, but if you're really interested in learning more, uh, what I would like to kind of suggest that you all do um, is to meet your local liaison. Um, those folks are in the chat, so you'll see uh, and who are in it, but I'll send out the full list. So meet with your local liaison um one-on-one -on -one, get a cup of coffee i'm a, let them know you're interested in looking at more commercial transactions and start to sort of build that partnership with your liaison then there's going to be different opportunities throughout the year uh to be able to participate um and especially with the conference coming up for next year but even for like the upcoming matchmaking event say you have a seller who you've been working with is publicly for sale at the upcoming matchmaking event each one of those p sellers has a facilitator at their table. It's a virtual table, but at their virtual table. And you could be their facilitator. You're already working with them. That's great. So that's a way that you can immediately kind of jump in, support that seller in participating in CBIT programming. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Other people, questions? Questions about the process? Questions about the partnership? Okay, but well, we'll send out a bunch of follow-up resources. Uh, please let your folk, you know, if you have any publicly for sale businesses, let them know about, about the upcoming matchmaking events. If you're really getting stuck, you know, you, you're, you're one of your sellers' is, buyer is really getting stuck on the financing part or just doesn't have their business plan prepared, please, please, please uh, send them to us. We would love to help get them over that finish line with local resources. Um, and, you know, we're here. Reach out to your local liaison, get that relationship uh, started. And we would love to, you know, work with you more closely as we as we try to help businesses throughout our community. And I think, believe it or not, we are done right on time. <laughs> so we'll let you get back to your day um, and have a great one. We look forward to getting to know you better. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take care.